Okay, so the vessels that um, the travel along the, the dermis and fatty tissue, whenever your body gets really hot, those vessels will dilate. So when those vessels dilate, now there's more blood um, traveling through the dermis section of your, of your skin, that second layer of skin right in the bottom. And because there's more blood running through there, a lot of heat is carried in your blood that allows for more blood to leave, I mean, more, blood, more heat to radiate and leave the body. That's what that does. And that's why whenever you're really hot, sometimes your body gets flushed and red. It's because of the vessels that are dilating close to the skin and the dermis section. And it also allows, it allows for that heat to leave the body. Um, excretion, so again, that's through sweat. Excretion is taking, is taking elements out of your body, taking out hormones, regulation, all that stuff. It's taking out things from the inside of your body to the outside, and that's done through sweat as well. Um, and shock impact absorption. When we're talking about just strictly trauma. So whenever you're impact, you get impacted or hit by an object like a baseball bat, your skin takes a lot of that force and protects the internal organs to an extent. So three layers, there's the epidermis. Remember, epi means above. So it's the layer above, the top layer, epidermis. Then you have the dermis. That's where a lot of vessels travel through. And the subcutaneous layer is the fatty layer under the dermis. So it's uh, the top layer of skin, the dermis, and then fatty tissue. Uh, wounds are often classified as closed or open so you have closed or open wounds all that means is that if it's a closed injury that the skin is intact if it's open that means the skin is broken because of the trauma itself and here's a better visual for you guys as you guys can see the dermis is this top layer right here this very very top layer um it's all just skin dead cells that's all that is because the skin uh it it gets created right here in this little section. And as it gets older and older and new cells are formed, the old ones get pushed up and they die. Uh, then, like I said, here's the dermis section. You have a lot of blood vessels. These are the blood vessels that would dilate um, to allow for heat to leave uh, and to cool you down. And your hair follicles are also located in this area. And sweatpants. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna play this video real quick. So this word right here, integumentary, this just, it's a fancy word for skin. So anytime you see this, if you don't know it yet, please write this down. This equals skin. Oh, hold up. I don't think I let the, the sound play. Let me, let me redo that again. So... Play this, share new screen, share sound. Skin consists of, the skin an, outer consists of an outer and inner dermis, dermis and an inner dermis. The epidermis. The skin consists of an outer epidermis and an inner dermis. The epidermis consists of five morphologically distinct layers of keratinocytes. The epidermis provides a physical and chemical barrier, helps regulate fluid and temperature, provides sensation, assists with vitamin D production, plays a role in excretion, and contributes to self-image. Open wounds with damage only to the epidermis are called superficial wounds. The dermis supplies the epidermis with nutrition and support, houses the epidermal appendages, assists with infection control and thermoregulation, and provides sensation. Open wounds involving the epidermis and dermis are called partial thickness wounds. The subcutaneous tissue, consisting of fat and fascia, lies beneath the dermis. The subcutaneous tissue provides cushioning, insulation, and support to the overlying tissues, is an energy storehouse, and facilitates movement between structures. Wounds that extend into or beyond the subcutaneous tissue layer are called full thickness wounds. Clinically, it is important to correctly identify structures within a wound to know the depth of tissue injury and to provide appropriate interventions. Any questions about that video? Nope. All right. 
<sighs> Go back to show screen. All right, so now we're gonna get into closed wound injuries. So with closed wound injuries, like I said, uh, see internal injuries with no pathway. So that means that, um, let's go back to little Timmy. This means that you were playing baseball with little Timmy, right? You made little Timmy mad. Little, little Timmy hit you with the baseball bat in the stomach. So now that baseball bat may have not been strong enough to break the skin. So the skin's gonna be unbroken. However, your internal organs may not be strong enough to withhold the force behind that bat. So even though that bat impacted the skin, did not break the skin, and then that force continues to go throughout your body, it doesn't just stop at the skin. And even though that, that, that force may have not been strong enough to break the skin, it could have been strong enough to break an organ that lies behind that that um the skin so that would be a closed wound because there is damage there may be bleeding but the impact wasn't strong enough to damage the skin or tear the skin but it was strong enough to damage and possibly tear the organ directly behind that skin and that's what a closed wound is um and of course they range from minor to life-threatening depending on, on location uh, the object and the speed of the object. A contusion is just a fancy word for a bruise. So you guys have to, you guys should write these down, these, these definitions if you don't have them yet. A contusion is just a fancy word for a bruise. So when someone gets an eye, they have a contusion in their eye. I mean, when they have a, a black eye, it's, it's a contusion. A hematoma is just a really, really big contusion. So a hematoma means that there's bruising, there's damage to vessels, there's damage to tissue, but it's bigger than normal, than a normal bruise because there was more damage that happened. So like it says here, it's similar to a contusion, but there's more tissue damage. There's just more damage and it involves um, blood vessels. Um, with the contusion, with this one up here, mainly you have you no know, tissue damage, some capillary damage. With the hematoma, you're looking at vessels that are a little bit larger that are being damaged. And I found a video on this, so I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you guys.